What's in a name? A lot of your Jennifer Love Hewitt. Jennifer Love Hewitt does seem to be some sort of a serial dater. Jennifer Love Hewitt is known as the girl next door who just basically is having fun. But I've definitely got a racy side to me, I hope. You don't say. Her breakups are always very immediately followed by a new relationship. In the next half hour, we'll connect the dots between Hewitt and her trail of Hollywood hunks, rockers, and one jilted VJ. He didn't take it very well. It's kind of a rough way to get dumped. Is Jennifer Love the heartbreaker the tabloids make her out to be? No. <laughs> Nothing I want to talk about in the romance department. She definitely does have a love him and leave him attitude. No pun intended. Jennifer Love Hewitt's party of five, plus a few more, next. By the time Jennifer Love Hewitt hit age 24, she was a Hollywood veteran. In the late 90s, she starred on Party of Five and appeared in a string of popular teen movies. Jennifer Love Hewitt was a household name. She was everywhere. And she was usually in the company of some hunky young star. She obviously likes men who are very good looking, who are very charming. She's the, the kind of girl any guy would be proud to take home to mom. but. <laughs> you have to hold on to her. Let's just say Jennifer was made for romance. <laughs> Jennifer was born on February 21st, 1979 in Waco, Texas. I was named after my mom's best friend in college. Her name was Duff Love. My mom, when I was born, said that I came out with like little heart-shaped lips, and so she thought it was definitely the most perfect thing. Jennifer Love Hewitt came into this world almost knowing what she wanted to do. You know, most people don't know until they're in their 20s or 30s, but she was three years old. By the time Jen was 10, the Hewitt clan moved to Hollywood. In no time at all, Jennifer was on TV. I did um, a Barbie commercial, super cool Barbie or something like that, I don't remember what it was, but I did a Barbie commercial, and I was really excited, and um, just had a blast. She was doing small bit parts in movies. She had an extra part in Sister Act 2, Back in the Habit, and she had worked on Kids Incorporated, a small variety show. In 1995, 16-year-old Jennifer landed the high-profile role of Scott Wolf's love interest on Party of Five. Well, she was put on Party of Five, and everyone just loved her. One year later, Hewitt snagged up a love interest of her own. Whoa! Jennifer and Blossom star Joey Lawrence met through mutual friends. By 1996, they were an item. Jennifer was 17, and Joey was 20. She sort of met Joey because he was doing Blossom at the time, and, you know, she was in the TV world, and they, they hooked up. Jennifer was in a group of other young people, other young actors and actresses, and they tended to congregate together. They had some basic things in common. They were both teen actors. I mean, she was totally smitten with Joey uh, at one point during the course of their relationship. She jumped on a plane and went to another part of the country where he was working just to be with him for 24 hours. And they flirted around. It was nothing really serious. They were too young. After dating for a few hot months, Jennifer and Joey's romance ended as suddenly as it began. Hewitt's next hookup wasn't exactly love at first sight. Enter Will Friedel. The teen actor was the co-star of the sitcom hit Boy Meets World. Jennifer's friends thought Will was perfect for Miss Love. Jennifer is a little bit leery of blind dates until a friend said, well, he's a mirror image of you. And Jennifer thought, well, I've got to meet somebody who's a mirror image of me. So uh, they went out on a, a first date. She gave him her number, and he never called her. Then they ended up on a movie set together called The Trojan War. And boy, did sparks fly then. Jennifer and Will portrayed on-screen friends who eventually hook up. During the filming, she was kissing him, and she said that she remembers her knees went weak. They wound up having to do a number of takes. As the takes mounted up, they became uh, more happy with the scene. And Jennifer didn't look back. It was all Will all the time. If Will and I are not together forever as boyfriend and girlfriend, I know that he will be always somebody for the rest of my life that I will love from the bottom of my heart. The relationship was that good. Do you have any secrets you want to share with us? Oh, no, no secrets. No, I'm always up. Secret. I love him very, very much. Ooh, you guys know now. 
when Jennifer would go on location somewhere, she would inevitably have pictures of Will all over her trailer. I mean, they would call each other all the time. It's something that, that is, is probably like one of the things that I'm proudest of, that in the midst of my busy schedule and his busy schedule and just being actors in general and that whole Hollywood thing and how that goes, that we've been able to even be together for a year and three months. From outside looking in, this looked like true love at a really young age and it looked like it was going to work for the long haul. Then Jennifer appeared on Total Request Live in the summer of 1997 with host Carson Daly. Carson's six years older than Jennifer, so it was a little different feel, you know, a little more mature man who can show her a little bit more. She was intrigued by that. They became friends and they started talking on the phone. But you know what they say, talk is cheap. Up next, Jennifer and Carson take action. They were incredibly affectionate all over each other. Then Jennifer yells, cut! The breakup with Carson was very messy. And later, Jennifer rocks a pop star's world. And the song was about how he had a crush on her and he was afraid to tell her. Jennifer Love Hewitt and Will Friedel were nearly inseparable in June 1997. Then Jennifer made a new friend, music VJ Carson Daly. Soon there was only one thing to do. As much as she loved Will, I mean, you know, she's a young girl. She's having fun. And, you know, at that age, you tend to lose interest, you know, when something else comes along. Carson lived in New York, but they kept in touch on the phone a lot. And finally, she flew to New York to visit him. And they did a lot of touristy stuff. They went to the Empire State Building. They took carriage rides. Her relationship with Will ended for reasons that they were just growing apart. You know, they, she was very young when they started dating. She was just 17, and he was 20. Just like that, Will was history. And as for her friendship with Carson... Carson flew out to Los Angeles for five days to visit Jennifer. So that kind of sealed it that they were now a couple. Carson Daly and Jennifer Love Hewitt went from friends to a cozy and very public couple. They were very, 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 very publicized. All over the papers because Carson is a celebrity in his own right, especially in New York, you know, um, which kind of gained her a lot of celebrity here in New York at that time. They had a long distance relationship going. So what Jennifer used to say was that they got a lot of space when they were apart. So when they were together, she gave him no space. She didn't really hold back. I mean, she just went for it. They were incredibly affectionate all over each other. Public di display of affection to the 10th degree. In January 1999, rumors circulated that Carson popped the question and they were close to walking down the aisle. Not true. Carson and Jennifer actually were catching the eye of everyone because they were not just a fling. They actually dated for 18 months and um, just going out to dinner in New York and having fun like that. It was just something different. And uh, he treated her like a little princess and she could giggle and be cute all night. They did have one problem though, and it was about 3,000 miles long. Jennifer lived in LA with her mom and Carson was in the Big Apple. There wasn't enough time for each other. Long distance relationship is so hard. That tends to be rough on relationships anyway. But from all appearances, the two handled the distance just fine for a year and a half. That was until Carson and the rest of the world got word from Jennifer that she wanted out. On September 17th, 1999, Jennifer announced that her relationship with Carson was over. The problem was, according to reports, Jennifer never told Carson. The breakup with Carson was very messy. She told about the breakup to her publicist. Carson says he found out the same time everybody else did that he woke up in the morning, turned on Howard Stern, and heard that he had broken up with Jennifer. And later that day, heard it on E! And called Jennifer, I guess, and confirmed that it was over. Jennifer just says that, you know, it was the distance that drove them apart. Nobody's saying what happened exactly, other than that he's on the East Coast and she's on the West Coast, and they are very busy. Ouch. Um, <laughs> he didn't take it very well. He was pretty open about being upset. It's kind of a rough way to get dumped. I think he was, it was very hard for him at first, but the way he coped with it was looking at it very rationally. 
He didn't do anything wrong. He says that he put in 110%. He used to fly out to L.A. to spend one day with her and fly all the way back. And so when he looked at it on paper, he'd done everything he could to make it work. And unfortunately, it just didn't. Ain't love grand. Jennifer and Carson went their separate ways. Carson hooked up with Starlet Tara Reid, and Jennifer went retro. So now all of a sudden she shows up with Wilmer Valderrama from that 70s show. And it just so happens he was there after she broke up with Carson, you know, so she could cry on his shoulder. They were spotted dancing very closely, kind of dirty dancing at a Hollywood party, and everybody said, this is the new guy. Somebody runs into somebody and dances a couple of dances at a club, and automatically it's front page news. Now, she never admitted that they were a couple, but she didn't deny it either. Before you can say polyester, it was bye-bye disco, hello rock and roll. Jennifer met Rich Cronin of the band LFO in 1999. Rich Cronin actually had a crush on her while he was working in a video store in Boston. And um, he saw her on the cover to the video telling you. A year later, his band LFO had a hit single. He was at the Blockbuster Awards that year. She was at the Blockbuster Awards. They met and, again, became friends. And you know what friendship can lead to. Up next, Jennifer the Muse. He wrote a song and sent it to her. It actually became a huge hit and it won her over. And later, love goes from Broadway to Britain. They'll be together, they'll be overseas. Who knows what could happen with the relationship from there.